welcome back to our Birds in Flight series. Today is class two. It's all about the pigeon. So we're going to work from some gentle pigeon or figure four variations to some more normal ones, to some advanced ones, and then we'll cool down at the end. So today you won't need any blocks, you'll just need your mat. So grab that and we'll get started. Plant the sole of your right foot on the mat, scoot it in close to your butt, and then we're going to come and do a reclined pigeon or figure four. So cross your left ankle over top of your right thigh, and use your own muscles to pull your left knee down and out. We'll stay here for a few breaths. So this class is, it has a high emphasis on external rotation of your hips. At the end, we're going to work into flying king pigeon pose, um, and then we'll restore with, with the restorative pigeon pose. And all this really takes a lot of external rotation through the hips. So now I want you to lift your right foot up, uh, thread your hands through that little hole, and then grab onto the front of the right shin. A bit more of a passive stretch now, pulling the knee closer to your body. You can use your left elbow to press out against the left inner thigh. From here, drop your legs over to the right so that the sole of your left foot plants on the mat. And then you can place your right hand on the outside of your left thigh and just open up to the left. Sending breath to the outside of the left glute. Lift them back so that your kneecap is pointing to the sky, and then press through your elbows and come up into a reverse tabletop. So from elbows, move on to your palms. You're still in this figure four shape with your left leg, and now we're going to bridge up. So push through the right heel, lift your hips up towards the ceiling. Feel how that changes the opening in the outer left glute and lower back down. We'll do five of these. So roll your shoulders down and back, press through the heel of the right foot. Lift your pelvis up and back down. Lift up, lower down. All the while, try to bring your left knee out and down actively. And last one here. Good. Drop back onto your back, roll your spine down, and then bring your knees into touch, your feet wide, and just windshield wiper your legs. And we'll move to the other side. So plant the sole of your left foot on the mat, cross your right ankle over your left knee. And for the first few breaths, instead of being here, think about pulling that right knee down towards the mat and out to the side. I like to also roll my ankle out. 
out in this pose, I think that feels good. Then reach your arms through the window created through your legs. Grab arms to the front of your left shin. Pry open the right knee more if that's comfortable for you by pushing through your right elbow. Release your grip, drop the sole of your right foot over to the left side, and reach your right arm out. Bring your legs up, back through center. Push through your elbows, come onto your palms, and move through five bridges on this side. So re Affirm the shape in your legs, push through your left heel, lift your hips up to the sky, and back down. See how that changes the sensation in the right outer hip, lift up, lower down, three more with your breath. Instead of laying back down after this fifth one, just uncross your foot. Widen your feet out to the edge of the mat. Toes are pointing out, heels are in. Push through your hands and come into Malasana. So just do your yogi squat here. Take a moment to sway from side to side. Open through your chest, extend through your spine, or round forward. Now plant your right hand in front of you. Use your left hand to manually open your left knee out to the side. So again, emphasizing that external rotation. Now once you get here, can you release your left hand and hold your left knee where it is? Your outer left glute could be cramping right now. Hang in there. Push out again one more time with your hand and then release your hand, but keep your knee where it is. Go ahead and we'll switch sides. So walk it out again, sway from side to side, and then place your left hand in front of you. Use your right hand on the inside of your right knee to open up to the side. Once you find that shape, engage your right outer glute and release your right hand. Keep your right knee where it is. Again, push right hand into right knee. Open up a little more. Engage your outer right glute, release your hand, keep your knee where it is. Good. Come back through center, move into tabletop pose, all fours. Hands and knees. So widen your fingertips, root down through all your knuckles, and then balance through really your right shin and the top of your right foot. You're gonna pull your right, your left knee in towards your left ankle, then rotate it out to the side. We're moving through a circle through our hip joint without um, overcompensating through our spine. So move it out, back behind you, and lower it down to the mat, or at least hover it. Now, kick your left heel behind you, rotate your left knee out to the side, and then as you come to the front, we're gonna come to figure four. So you'll cross your left ankle, in front of your right thigh. And then you're going to walk your hands over to the left. Kind of this funky cat cow figure four puppy pose. And then walk your hands directly in front of you. You can tuck through your right toes if that gives you a little more stability. Now, as we move through, from left through center and over to the right, you're gonna feel the sensation increase. So take a deep breath in the center and then walk the hands over to the right. Hands back to center, lift up on your palms and do a couple of cat cows here. So for a cat, lift the tailbone, lift the crown of the head, drop through the belly. For a cat, did I say cat? I meant cow. 
Now for cats, you're gonna round through your spine, tuck chin to chest. Two more. Good. Now whatever way you want to do it, release back to neutral tabletop. Root through your hands, balance on the left knee and the top of the left foot, pull right knee into right elbow, rotate that hip out, so bring your knee out to the side, extend it behind you, all the while trying to keep your spine flat, and then hover your right knee off the mat. Now press your right heel to the ceiling, rotate your right knee out to the side, and then on your way up, you're going to cross right ankle in front of left knee. Come into this figure four shape. Walk your hands out to the right as your belly drops towards the mat. Now walk your hands through center into this puppy pose variation. Your arms can be as active or passive as you want them to be. Finally, walk your hands over to the left, increasing that stretch, increasing that sensation through the outer right glute. Come back through center, press through your palms, and move into three cat cows with your breath. Cow drops the belly and lifts the chest. Cat rounds through the spine, pulls chin to chest. This might feel a little funky. Your hips are in a different alignment than what you're probably used to. One more. Unwrap your legs. Find your neutral tabletop. Tuck your toes and lift your legs high. Lift your hips high for down facing dog. Walk out your dog. Take any knee flexion or sways or twists that you need for a few breaths. Settle back into a neutral down dog shape. Inhale, lift your left leg high, three-legged dog, neutral hips. And then exhale, pull your knee partially into your chest and you're gonna cross your left knee or your left ankle over your right knee for this figure four down dog. So you'll have to create more of a knee bend through the right knee. That's totally okay. And that will actually increase the sensation. So instead of this, let's bend the right knee more and really send those hips back more. Unwrap, inhale, three-legged dog, left leg lifts. Exhale, step, left foot forward between your palms. Inhale, balance through your left foot. Bring your arms overhead and your right knee to the sky for sword pose. Now we'll come into standing pigeon. So cross right ankle over left knee. Hands through heart center, sit your hips back. From here, can you gracefully move into toe stand? So you'll continue to send your hips down as you lift onto the ball of your left foot. So balancing into this figure four toe stand. Whenever you're ready, push back up, rise to standing pigeon, and then bring your right knee out to the side, send your right leg behind you, open up into warrior two. Hips open to the right, left knee is tracking over left ankle, arms are outstretched long. breaths. Now lift up onto your left heel, turn your left toes in slightly, and then we're moving into skandasana. So bend deeply into your left knee. Right leg is straight, balancing on the right heel. Big stretch through the inner right groin. Won't stay here too long. Now plant your right hand on the inside of your left foot, rotate all your toes to face the left side of the mat, 
We're dropping into re reverse skandasana. So first, just let the hips sink. Again, your feet are both facing to the left and you're bouncing on the blade edge of your foot. Walk your right hand out in front of you a little more if you need. This is a big stretch, so send calming breath throughout your body. And then we're going to move into some reverse skandasana lifts. So you're going to push strong through the outer blade edge of your foot, reach your left arm overhead, and lift your hips to the sky. Big side body stretch, big outer left glute stretch. Exhale back down. Inhale, lift it up. Left hip to the sky. Exhale down. Inhale, lift it up. And then from here, move into lizard. So pivot onto the ball of your back right foot. And then let's drop onto the back right knee. Inhale, lift your chest forward. And exhale, you can sink down onto your forearms if that's comfortable for you. And at first, I want the whole sole of your left foot planted. It's really wide on the outer edge of your mat, but put equal weight through the pinky toe and the big toe. Now start to rotate onto the blade edge, the pinky edge of your left foot. Open your chest to the left, and then again, push your left hand into your left knee, working into that external rotation. But from here, can you release your left hand and keep your left knee where it is? And then pull your left knee into your body, and then rotate it out. Pull it into your body, rotate it out, Swiveling onto the sole of the foot, and then the blade edge of your foot. Good. Hands plant underneath your body, back toes tuck. And we're going to move into a figure four plank. So your back knee lifts, and then you're going to send your left ankle over the right knee as your hips drop to the very back of your mat. Heavy bend in both knees. Inhale, stretch your right leg long, your right fingertips overhead. Exhale, sink the hips back down. Inhale, overhead. Stretch your right leg long. Plant your right hand. Rotate the right foot to the other side of the mat. And we'll do the same thing. So heavy bend, deep bend into your knees. Hips are hovering off the mat. And then inhale, stretch your left fingertips overhead. Stretch your right leg long. One more. Deep bend, straighten it out. Plant your hand, set back to downward facing dog. And we'll do the other side. Inhale, reach your right leg high. Exhale, knee halfway into chest, and then cross right knee over left ankle. Take a moment to just find your shape. Bend deeply into left knee. Send your hips higher. Good, unwrap, inhale, three-legged dog, right leg high. Exhale, come forward to plank, plant your right foot between your hands. Balance on your right foot, inhale, lift up to stork pose. Arms overhead, left knee high. And then exhale, standing figure four, standing pigeon. Cross your left ankle over your right knee. Hands in a prayer position, sit your hips low. breaths to focus, find your balance, and stretch deeper. Now I like to shimmy my foot up a little more, and we'll move into our toe stand. So send your hips, sit your hips lower, balance onto the ball of your right foot, coming into our toe stand. And then when you're ready, place your right heel, stand back up through standing pigeon. Good, and then send your left leg out long behind you for warrior two. Arms are outstretched, hips are open to the left. Left ankle's at a 90 degree bend. One more big inhale here. One exhale. Pivot on the ball of your right foot. Move those left or right toes inwards. 
and then sit deeply into your Skandasana lunge. Good, now plant your left hand on the inside of your right foot, pivot, pivot all your toes to face the right edge of the mat, and lower your left hip down for reverse Skandasana. Big, intense stretch. From here, we'll move into our reverse Skandasana lifts. So plant through the blade edge of both feet. Inhale, lift your right hip high, your right arm overhead. Exhale, lower back down. Inhale, lift it overhead. Exhale, lower back down. Last one. Lift it up. Lower it down. Now move into a lizard. So step your right foot a little more in front of you. Lower your back knee down. Wiggle your foot so it's on the outer edge of your mat. Inhale, lift through your chest. Send the crown of your head forward. And exhale, you can lower onto your forearms if that's comfortable. Or onto a block if you're halfway in between. Start to twist your body open to the right. Place your right hand on the inside of your right knee. And then now rotate onto the pinky edge of your right foot. Can you engage the outer right glute? Let go of your hand and keep your foot, your knee where it is. Now rotate onto the sole of the foot, the big toe edge, and then rotate onto the pinky edge. So we're moving our knee in and out by using our own hip muscles. Let's do one more. Plant through both hands. We're going to come into our figure four planks. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee. Send your right ankle over your left knee and bend deeply. Hips are hovering. And I'll stretch left leg long, arm overhead. Hovering plank, bend deeply through your hips and knees and then extend, straighten your left leg and arm. Left hand plants, pivot on the right foot to face the other side. Hover your hips off the mat. And then extend long, straighten through left leg, right arm. One more time. Big stretch, plant your right hand, plant your right foot. Lower your knees and take a child's pose. We'll move into that sequence one more time. Let's rest for a few breaths first. From your child's pose, stretch your fingertips long, lift your hips up, tuck your toes and send your hips high for downward facing dog. Root through your right foot, inhale, lift your left leg for three-legged dog, neutral hips. Exhale, knee comes in halfway, cross it over, figure four down dog. Big inhale here, exhale, unravel, inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, left foot plants between both feet. Inhale, lift up, restore pose, balance on your left foot, right knee to the sky. Exhale, standing pigeon, right knee over left, right ankle over left knee. Feel free to lower briefly into your toe stand here or stay in standing pigeon. Lift back up, stork pose. And then step your right foot back for warrior two. Big inhale here. Big exhale, move those left toes in, sit into your left leg for Skandasana. Plant your right hand, rotate all your toes to face the left and drop your right hip down. Inhale, lift your left hip high, your left arm overhead and exhale down. Just one and a half times this round. My camera looks very crooked, I'm sorry. 
Let's fix that. Maybe? Okay. And from reverse skandasana, we're going to come into lizard, so plant both hands on the inside of your right foot, lower your back knee. Inhale, lengthen through your spine, exhale, drop onto elbows. Now roll onto the pinky edge of your foot, and then just actively move that knee in and out. We're not going to push with our hand this round. Plant through both hands, tuck your back toes. We'll move into our bigger four planks. Lift your back knee, send your left ankle over your right knee as your hips hover off the mat with knees bent. Inhale, extend, and then rotate onto the ball of your right toe, face the other way. Exhale, hip, hips hover. Inhale, extend. Plant your left foot and left hand, downward facing dog. It's a little quicker through that sequence the second time around. We'll finish up with our right leg. Inhale, three-legged dog. Right heel lifts high. Exhale, knee comes halfway in. Inhale, cross right ankle over left knee. Exhale, unwind. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, foot between palms. Inhale, step up for stork pose. Exhale, standing pigeon. Left ankle crosses over right knee. So take a few breaths here in this pose or option to balance onto the ball of your right foot as you send your hips lower or toe stand. Rise back up, circle the left knee out to the side and plant it behind you for warrior two. Big inhale. Exhale, sit into your skandasana. Lunge into the right knee. Plant your left hand, rotate your toes to face the right edge of the mat for reverse skandasana. Sink the left hip, and then lift the right hip, right arm overhead. Just one more of these. Sink it down, and then lift it up. Plant your right foot on the outer edge of your mat for lizard. As you lower your left knee, untuck your left toes, and drop onto your elbows. Start to roll onto the pinky edge and then the sole of your right foot. Bring that knee out further and hugging in towards your body. Plant through both hands. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee. We're moving into our figure four plank. So place your right ankle over your left knee as you hover your hips down at the very back of your mat. Inhale, extend long. And then rotate on the ball of your left foot to face the other side of the mat, transferring the weight into your left hand and extending long again. Plant right foot and right hand, downward facing dog. Let's take another child's pose. We're going to prepare for flying king pigeon. So this is a really fun, I think accessible arm balance. I, I tried it for the first time a few weeks ago and I was very surprised that I was able to get it. Um, so I'll show you how to do it in just a moment, but let's just take a breath to prepare. And remember, you might surprise yourself and you'll never get something if you don't try. So these, the birds in flight series, like I said, it's a little more challenging, we're trying some funky poses that you might not have tried before, but no one's watching you, so just go for it. Let's press back up into downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your left leg high, three legged dog. Exhale, plant it between your hands. Drop your back knee down. We're coming into a half splits. So set your hips over your right knee as you straighten into your left knee. Feeling that nice stretch along the back of your left hamstring. Now plant your left foot down, micro bend through that knee, and we're going to come into standing splits. So you'll push off your back foot, 
and then fold your body down over your right leg. You can open up the right hip a little bit here. Actively engage the back of your right glute and right hamstring. And from here, whoops, headband fell out. We're gonna move into our flying king pigeon. So you might need to take a step back towards the middle of the mat, depending on where you are. And you're gonna cross your right leg over your left into that figure four shape again. So how this works is you'll hook your right toes on the outside of your left tricep. Then you're gonna center weight forward. At the same time, you'll have support on your right knee on the back of your right tricep. So I'll show you what it looks like. You're gonna weight through your hands, widen your fingers. And then this is a hook because we're gonna extend our left leg behind us. So our left leg won't be used for balance, it's just our right leg with the, the knee on the back of the right arm and then the toes hooking over the left arm. Okay, so come join me whenever you're ready. Send your weight forward into your hands, lift your back leg up and extend it long behind you. When you've had enough, slowly, more slowly than I did, release back down. And then take a child's pose or pause the video and try again. to wake back up and then let's scoot to the very back of our edge of our mat so we don't have to later on. Tuck your toes, send your hips high, downward facing dog. Inhale, reach your right heel high. Exhale, plant that foot between your palms, lower your back knee, send your hips over your back knee as you straighten your right leg. Half splits. start to bend into your right knee. I would wiggle that foot closer in towards the middle of the mat, just in preparation. And then we're gonna spring up for standing splits, engaging the back body, the back of the left leg, opening up through the right hamstring. A little bit higher. This is practicing that leg behind us. That's the one that's gonna lift. Well, we did it the wrong way, but it's fine. And then cross your left ankle over your right knee again into our figure four standing pigeon. Now, again, left knee is secure against left back of the tricep. Right toes are hooking around the right tricep. So start to sit the hips down, widen your grip on the mat, really active through the left ankle and then center weight forward as you lift your right leg up and behind you. A couple breaths. And then release back down. Good job. That's a fun one. It's tough, but you'll get it, I promise. Keep working at it. So from here, quickly, we'll just push back into downward dog and then step the left foot forward for half pigeon. Left knee is behind left wrist, left toes are behind right wrist. So let's come into an active variation first. If possible, try to have your shin more parallel to the front of the mat and your front ankle flexed. Now, lift your hands from the mat and just sit here for a few breaths. You can bounce up and down Really feeling the outside of your left thigh weighting down towards the mat. If you're able, something I'm working on, I don't have it yet, but feel free to bend your right knee and come into like a mermaid pose or a king pigeon. For me, I can just reach back with both hands. And that's fine too. Good. And now I just want you to release into whatever pigeon 
variation you want. If you want to start to point through your left toes and bring the left heel closer into your body, that's fine. Big inhale, stretch the spine forward. And then exhale to release. Our final poses of the class. So let your body start to calm, your breath start to slow. Start to unwind time. Tuck your back toes, press your palms, and send the left leg back for downward facing dog. You should feel pretty significant difference in the sides here, so let's even it out. Send your right leg forward for half pigeon. We'll take our active variation first, so if possible, have the right ankle flexed and the right shin parallel to the top of the mat. You can tuck or untuck your back toes. I like to tuck them. And then lift your hands up. Take a few bounces. You might feel difference in one side. This side's tighter for me. Start to sink your outer right hip towards the mat. And then if you want, feel free to bend your left knee in and capture that ankle or flip your grip, whatever your body is able to do or calling for you to do. And then gently release into your relaxed, restorative pigeon variation. Two more breaths. Make them full. Gently roll onto your right hip and cross your legs in front of you. You can move into Shavasana from here or meet me seated with hands on knees. One big inhale. And one big exhale together. Hands at heart center, namaste. Thank you guys for joining for class two. This is our pigeon class. Um, pigeon's a tricky one. A lot of people love the feeling of the outer glute stretch. For a lot of people, it's really, really tight and can even bring up some motions. So I want you to be gent gentle with yourself, but stick with this variation of poses because it's so good for you to open up your hips. But I hope some of you got your first flying king pigeon today. Keep practicing. It's a fun one and one that I know you can do if you keep working at it. So thank you guys for joining me and I will see you next time.